family of six loses their home in a wind-fueled house fire in Terrytown Thursday afternoon. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a busy Thursday afternoon for firefighters in Gehring and Scottsbluff area. Shortly after 1230 Thursday afternoon, Gehring Fire was called to a controlled ditch burn that got out of control on Lockwood Road between County Roads R and S. The blaze quickly consuming two nearby vehicles and threatening a nearby home, forcing firefighters into a defensive posture. Just over 10 minutes later, Scottsbluff Rural Fire was called to a house fire on Michael Street in Terrytown, finding the garage and home fully involved. Mutual aid was provided by the City of Scottsbluff Fire Department. No word on the cause of the blaze as of broadcast time. However, the structure suffered severe damage, likely bordering on a total loss. Firefighter Ministry is assisting this family and has posted a list of needs on their Facebook page. Well, it's a celebratory weekend for Panhandle Co-op as they're celebrating 80 years in business. On Thursday evening, they hosted a business after hours at their two newest stores in Scotts Bluff, which include a ribbon cutting for their new feed store and their newest edition, The Good Life. The Good Life is primarily a gift store. Um, we have all kinds of gifts for all kinds of people, um, but it's also the kind of store that you find the functional and beautiful products that just make life a little better. Tonight, Main Street Market will be hosting a wine tasting from 5 to 7, and on Saturday, they'll have a food truck competition, beer garden, and live music. We'll have more news right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether it is building, buying, or renovating, we have the home loan or home equity line of credit to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Life Care promises us that we are looked after and taken care of properly. If I didn't have Life Care, I would be probably scared to death about having enough money uh, for when I got older or when I got sick. Moving in here was uh, an easy decision and in fact uh, a no-brainer. I looked at it as actually buying long-term care insurance and in retrospect, uh, a good move. One of the things that convinces me that we did the right thing is no matter what happens, we will constantly be taken care of. The whole thing is, is just vital because you don't have to be worried about what's ahead for you. It's there, it's in black and white, and that's reassuring. This is home, it has been, uh, from the day I moved in. May is Beef Month, a time to celebrate the high quality beef products that are raised by farmers and ranchers right here in Nebraska. With over 5 million cattle fed and marketed each year, Nebraska is the number one cattle feeding state in the country. From steaks and roasts to ground beef and kebabs, Nebraska's beef producers take pride in raising safe, wholesome products that end up on dinner plates around the world. Join the beef community by celebrating Beef Month with your favorite beef meal tonight. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Sponsored by Frank Parts, Marker Ag, and Runza Restaurants. Welcome back. A flag line along First Avenue in Scotts Bluff Thursday welcomed a group of 14 Panhandle veterans, four from the Scotts Bluff Gearing area, as they stopped at the Elks Lodge in Scotts Bluff for lunch as they traveled to Denver on their latest trip organized through the Honor Flight Network with Veterans Memorial Flight Incorporated. The veterans left Shattern at 10 a.m. Thursday, passing through Alliance en route to Denver. Highway 385 in Alliance was also lined with flags as people showed their gratitude and honor as veterans and their escorts passed through town. 
Well, Governor Pete Ricketts has announced that all U.S. and Nebraska flags are to be flown at half staff in solemn remembrance of Americans who lost their lives due to the coronavirus. According to the proclamation, COVID-19 has claimed the lives of one million Americans. Flags will be flown at half staff immediately and return to full staff at sunset on Monday, May 16th. And Governor Ricketts also signed a proclamation for Foster Care Month to help raise awareness of the need for foster parents throughout the state. Ricketts noted that just under 1,160 children are in foster care throughout the state, with even more in the care of close relatives. DHHS Children and Family Service Director Stephanie Beasley says that the pandemic did have an impact on family stability, but collaborative efforts have helped minimize the effects. We really had a wonderful opportunity through the community collaboratives to learn very early on. Welcome to Kelly's, home of the Valley's best selection of wine, spirits, and beer. Whether you're brand loyal to the tried and true brew or really enjoy trying something different and new, Kelly's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated and right on your way on West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Kelly's Liquor, if you can't find it at Kelly's, it's not worth drinking. The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. I really like how our OB department takes our limited amount of, of doctors and turns it into a strength. Even though we only have a couple of people, you get to know them well over your entire pregnancy. We have two state-of-the-art labor rooms that are new with our last edition. We have a couple of very nice postpartum rooms also right here in the hospital so they can get as much time with mom and baby as possible. Logos and Gearing is the place to get all of your school spirit gear, personalized gifts, and promotional items for your business and employees and banners for any special event. Logos is also the only place to stop for custom screen printing or embroidery. You can even design it yourself on their interactive website. Stop into Logos today. They'll design it, print it, and have it to you in no time. There's no job too big or small for Logos. That's Logos in Gearing. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield here on the Rural Radio Network. Better cash than expected. Hotel retail spreads, corn versus cattle market, and a notable drop in the beef cow slaughters. Just a few of the things that we're going to hit on, which is made for an interesting trading week this week. As Brad Coima joins us, he's with Coima, Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. Let's talk about better cash than expected. You know, we thought we had some decent numbers in the last couple of weeks, even in the ebb and flows. Nice to see the North still doing well. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, 
I, uh, I, 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 I will take it every time to be wrong that the market's better than I thought it was going to be. I was a little worried that we we're going to start to see some of that price erosion. You know, the South is trading at such a steep discount to us here. Um, and, you know, they are largely basis traders. And with the basis the way it is, uh, you know, the June at a very, very steep discount to cash, almost record setting. Um, you know, that usually has a tendency to drag the cash market down. So I, I don't know if we're quite steady, but it's pretty close. There was some 230 to a major uh, yesterday and a little bit of it again this morning. Um, there's a little bit of 144. Uh, I, last week, a lot of us got 145 to 6. Uh, so it's a little softer, but I, I, I it, again, it's a little bit better than I expected. So that's encouraging. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, whether we get convergence at all this time with the, with the June contract. Um, don't forget that the way the delivery system is set up, Susan, is flawed in my opinion. Uh, they allow you to deliver cattle, you know, like something like 12 business days after the expiration of a contract. So that literally means with the holiday that you can deliver cattle up into the middle of July. Um, I, so, yeah, you know, you, theoretically, June cattle are guessing what the cash market is going to be in the middle of July. Then it doesn't seem like that's really what this contract was set up to do. But, hey, they don't ask me. Right. So. All right. Speaking of not asking you, I just got a um, news release that just came from um, Senator Tester's office and says that he is questioning and putting pressure on the Ag Secretary when it comes to meat consolidation legislation. And you have, I have had this conversation many the time. Do you want to share your thoughts? And is it going to have a effect at all on this market trade? As you chuckle. Wow. Well, <laughs> loaded question. Well, yeah, and and you know, I, I yeah, anybody that knows me knows that I'm uh, you know advocate for the independent cattle feeder, right? Um, you know, some of this this topic has been broached before about uh, what do you do with an oligopoly that controls eighty five percent of the of the of the beef trade uh, of the beef business? I should say, um, it's very very dangerous. Uh, I expressed that to senators and representatives themselves. You know, themselves. So you, you got a weird industry that, you know, yeah, I'm generally a conservative small government guy but when you have this much power in the hands of so few it would seem to me like it's something that needs to be more closely watched um so this idea of breaking up the big four wow wouldn't that be something i mean it's been talked about you know in the bar mm -hmm. uh, hoping and wishing and wondering and frankly i wonder in the short term what that would be like i, I think that that would be uh there would be some big time potholes there for a little while. Uh, perhaps the long term benefits of something like that would uh, outweigh the short term issues, but it would it would certainly create some stress, if nothing else. Um, you know what happened two years ago when the NCBA tried their voluntary to mandatory approach, um, the awareness and the um, you know, the Packers actually grew a conscience for some of them did for a while there. And, and, you know, for fear of reprisal, I think did participate a little bit more in the cash market. So, you know, any kind of uh, uh, pressure that uh, that's put on them is okay with me. I know that he said that I'm not for putting anyone out of business. What I am for is adding more competition to the marketplace. Well, I like that. How about let's not put any more cow calf guys and little guys out of business too. Right. Yep. Exactly. So now we'll, we'll divert back from the fork in the road to talk a little bit more. Sorry, it came up. I had to ask. Um, box beef market, um, as we look at, at the way the box have been trading, obviously some choppiness. Can that all be tied back to the, not only hotel, but retail supplies and, and what we're seeing? Well, I think it's certainly part of it. I, it and it, it, it's probably good that you bring it up when we talk about it a little. We're having a little bit of a contra or contra seasonal problem here. Normally, um, right ahead of Mother's Day is is a lock. I mean, boxes go higher. I just been led by New York strip steaks. If you you know if you didn't know, I mean that's the biggest weekend for that that there is a, of the whole year. Uh, but the the beef trade has been just okay here the last little while. And I think here, pardon my unprofessionalism here, but so the blue line is retail, the red line is wholesale. Notice the divergence. Um, so. The blue line is way up there in the rafters, right? So in other words, now, you know, I guess I'm, I'm going to be guilty of making another enemy, but now it looks like it's the, you know, the, the grocery stores, the the big box deals, the the Costco's, the Walmart's, the whatever. Pick your, take your, pick your poison, the Hy-Vee's, that, 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 that seems to be where some of the discrepancy is and they're wondering why they can't sell six dollar hamburger i would say well maybe don't price it at six dollars um mm -hmm. 
obviously, you know, people are going to say, well, that's just an oversimplified approach. Well, maybe it is, but it, 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 it doesn't seem to me like uh, the levels that they, so if they've got too much stuck in that meat that they got to sell at that eye, that's not my fault. Nobody cares where my fat cattle break even at. They don't guarantee that I'm going to make money on it either. So uh, let's get this stuff priced in line. Um, this, this excuse that, well, it's inflation, you know, I mean, I, whatever. I, 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 I'm tired of that, that that's, uh, it's either COVID or inflation, right? That's to blame for everything. So are you almost done with this whole fun selling for a while? Finally, June cattle, hallelujah. You know, last couple of days, uh, I think the last two times we did cattle call, I was, you know, being the, you know, gloomy, gloomy Gus here with, um, you know, we got a lot of fun selling, got to come, got to come, you know, and so we've had a lot of it. So I think we're about to the end of that trail here. This is the fourth day of the Goldman roll. And you can see what happens when the fun selling relents. The June had a nice update today, up over a dollar. We were even better than that for a while. So uh, I do look for the forwards to kind of gain a little bit. They ought to anyway at a discount to cash like they are and maybe stabilize the thing a little bit. I, I, I would say, though, that I think we've got an awful lot of heifer calves on feed and steer calves. But, I mean, the difference maker in the balance of supply is all those extra females on feed. And we got to work through that this summer. And we will. And 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 I don't think the low this summer is going to be nearly as bad as what some people think. Um and then we can look forward to the fourth quarter and the first quarter of next year being a lot more supply side friendly, I think. Well, you know, they always say rain makes grain, but I think rain is making for some greener pastures, which might be slowing down some of our beef cow slaughters. For sure. We referenced that early, you know, that we've seen a lot less beef cow slaughter. And I think and, and they're through that terrible storm system. Some of those people in the Dakotas, North Dakota in particular, lost a lot of calves. And that brought a lot more beef cows to market um, as well. The the. Uh, the, it's been noticeable though for the last two weeks the beef cow slaughter drop. So that's our first that's our first key thing to keep an eye on. Now, hopefully those guys keep getting timely rains, keep getting that grass going, and then when we get to this fall, we'll see if they don't decide that hey, we're going to hold back some of these heifers and not send every one of them to the feed yard like they did last year. All right, as we wrap up, let's talk real quick about this corn versus uh, cattle market. Yeah, today we got pretty whippy right at the end there, just as you and I were prepping to go on. Uh, um, and of course, you know, at higher corn is bearish feeder cattle. Um, although if you went to a sale barn in the last week, you might not have noticed it. I thought these cash feeders were, were really, really strong uh, the last week or so. Uh, but futures certainly respond to that. And that did not help our back end of our fat cattle market either today with, uh, you know, feeder cattle futures almost $2 lower. Um, I am not necessarily, I know we're talking cattle, not corn, but I, I kind of feel like the corn, this is the time of year where you make a high um i think we'll get it planted um uh, i get it it's dry in india and there's ukraine and all the rest but you know some of that we knew about for quite a while already so i'm i'm really not thinking the corn's going to run away from here at least not at this point all right sounds good thanks for joining us this week brad welcome and that has been Brad Quima joining us. Just a reminder, folks, commodity futures and options involve a substantial risk of loss not suitable to all investors. And that's this week's Cattle Call on the Rural Radio Network.
So let's take a look at what's happening on your weekend in the calendar. The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant, and full-service gas leader. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, a new business has opened its door in Garing and the owners hope they knock it out of the park. Grand Slammers, owned by Derek Wilman and Carl Norgard, is a go-to spot for collectors looking to get their hands on sport card singles and sealed boxes. Additionally, they have a variety of sports memorabilia for sale as well. Wilman says that card collecting was a passion for them in their youth, and their interest has surged in recent years. I did it as a kid, Carl did too, and uh, yeah, it's just something I want to get kids back involved with so they can Learn more about everything. The cars these days are just so different than they were when I was growing up. So, yeah, excited to teach the kids. Norgard says he's excited to debut their bid wall, which allows customers to place a bid on a featured card, and whoever is the highest bidder at the end of the auction wins. It's, it's, it's really something really cool. It's something I saw when I was a kid and it worked really well getting people in the shop. Uh, it's a really good way to build a community uh, within our realm of baseball cards, football, sports cards in general. Grand Slammers is located at 965 O Street, just around the corner from the Gehring Bakery, and will be open daily from 11 to 7. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much.